So this is Wahid Karzai. Uh, today we are presenting ACTA Thoracic Web Webinar, Recent Advances in Lung Isolation Techniques. We will acquaint you with uh, common methods which are used successfully in our practice in large thoracic centers. Uh, we will present. We will also update you on new developments in this area. By the end of the webinar, you will be able to define indications and relative contraindications on using double lumen tubes or bronchial blockers. We will show you how to integrate video assisted intubation and video assisted lung isolation techniques um, techniques in your practice. We will show you how to make appropriate decisions regarding lung isolation and one lung ventilation with anticipated or unanticipated difficult airway. And we'll discuss airway management in very special case of lung transplantation. As we're talking about airway manage management, we'll not only have a theoretical discussion, we'll provide you with practical advice on how you can integrate uh, this in your daily practice. Nandi? Yes, good afternoon, Nandi here. Uh, welcome to the webinar. And without any further delays, I'm delighted to introduce our first speaker, who is Professor Mert Senturk, a professor of cardiothoracic anesthesia at Istanbul University in Turkey, he has many international roles, including he is the chief investigator of the Rotor trial, member of the scientific committee of EACTA. Today, he will share his expertise on lung isolation uh, concerning the debate, a tube or a blocker. And he will make a case that the double lumen tube is indeed his old friend. Before turning it over to Mert, again, just let me remind you about your questions. Please type them in the question box in your control panel. After the lecture, we will have some time to discuss these questions. Mert. Thank you very much, Andy, for this nice introduction. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is a first time for the webinar, and we all, or we all are very really exciting. Uh, hope everything's worked fine. I'm going to talk about the double lumen tips, the classical method of, for the one lung ventilation approach. I don't have any financial support for this presentation. And this is uh, my agenda. As you can see, I'm going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of double lumen tubes. At the end, you will be able to, see, to hear something about the new invention of double lumen tubes with an embedded camera too. Um, first of all, something about the indications of one lung ventilation. We all know from our knowledge and from our information that there were some absolute and relative indications in one lung ventilation. And actually, I honestly to say, the absolute indications of one lung ventilation were in a very narrow margin. But we have to know now that a relative indication of one lung ventilation is not just a surgical comfort, and it also assures a decrease in interoperative and postoperative complications. And any relative indication may unpredictably become an absolute um, indication during the operation. So uh, instead of uh, making the differentiation of uh, absolute and relative indications, it's better to make a differentiation, a classification between the lung separation and lung isolation. And this is going to be uh, mentioned in the next slides and in the next lectures too. Moreover, there are the indications of uh, one lung ventilation are also increasing. Previously, it was only the lung surgery, but we have now also the esophagus surgery, the spine surgery, minimally invasive cardiac surgery, and a lot of other operations which has to be done with one lung ventilation. Just one slide for the history. You see here the so-called Carlens tube. Uh, Carlens was the in inventor of this tube. And there was a cardinal hook, as you can see here. This cardinal hook was good for the placement of the uh, tube. Because if you would feel the resistance of the cardinal tube at the level of the carina, uh, this would mean for you that you were in the correct position. However, just this hook was associated also with a lot of complications uh, regarding the airway trauma. Therefore, it is only history now. So back to the subject, we have to know something about the size and the shape of the double lumen tubes. 
And you can see here that even the thinnest double lumen tube that we use during one long ventilation in adults is actually quite thicker than the very normal conventional endotracheal tube that we use daily. Therefore, we have to take care that we insert quite a thick and stiff um, tube compared to the conventional endotracheal tube uh, during the one lung ventilation. Um, one thing more that we have to see here that the double lumen tube uh, has a double D shape and this is the most optimal uh, shape of lumen for um, for, for the ventilation. Uh, the normal uh, definition of the double lumen tubes uh, is made regarding the site of the bronchial uh, lumen. As you can see, if we uh, put the bronchial lumen to the left main bronchus, this is a left double lumen tube, and for the right lung, we have a right double lumen tube with some different shape of the cuff here, because I'm going to mention about it, we have here the bronchial, uh, the, the lateral eye for the right upper lobe in the bronchial lumen. Uh, positioning, I'm going to talk about positioning, but the left double lumen tube looks something like this. We have here the bronchial lumen in the left main bronchus, and what we see at the tip of the left main bronchus is the secondary bifurcation. Uh, for the unexperienced colleagues, it can be the problem that uh, they cannot differ between the secondary bifurcation and the carina. All it's all therefore it's always a good idea to make an orientation with the help of the right upper lobe because the right upper lobe is, as you can see, the only uh, bronchus with three or apertura here. It looks somehow like a Mercedes sedan if we can make a an advertorial like this. And in any case, you have to check your position with the view from the tracheal lumen. And you have to see the dark blue cuff of the bronchial lumen just two, three millimeters below the cardinal level. Uh, the challenge of the right side of double lumen tube is a little um, more important. Because, as I said before, we have here, usually, not in any, every case, but usually, we have here the right upper lobe some 2.0 or 2.5 centimeters below the carina. And therefore, you have to adjust the lateral eye of your bronchial tube to the right upper lobe. And this can be, in some cases, challenging. How, about, how do we intubate with the double human tube? The normal way we do is, uh, we do the, the, the lacrimal endoscopy and insert the double lumen tube inside. And afterwards, we check the correct position with, um, with the fiber optic bronchoscope. Or we can make a very normal endotracheal intubation with an endotracheal tube and change afterwards uh, the, the endotracheal tube to, to a double lumen tube with the help of a tube exchanger. Or we can use the fiber optic bronchoscope as a guide uh, and uh, pull, uh, make the position, correct position, just at the beginning of the intubation process. In any case, we have to use the fiber optic bronchoscope. In any case, we have to be familiar with the fiber optic bronchoscopy. How to verify the correct position of double lumen tube? Of course, the oscillation is still the most important uh, way, but it has been shown that only the auscultation was associated with uh, my position, uh, with an unpredicted and unseen my position of the double lumen tube. Therefore, using the fiber optic uh, bronchoscopy for the verification, for, for, for the verification appears to be crucial. Again, um, by start of one lung ventilation, there should be some changes in the ventilatory setting. For the same tidal volume, we would need some more uh, pressures, or if we have by pressure controlled ventilation, with the same pressure, we would uh, achieve lower tidal volumes. Therefore, 
uh, monitoring to frame ventilator, ventilator changes appear to be also valuable for the verification of the placement position of the double lumen tube. We have to use the fiber optic bronchoscopy not only for the positioning, but also in any uh, unexpected change in the ventilation uh, or gas exchange, we have to check the position of the double lumen tube again with the fiber optic bronchoscope. It is probably the fiber optic bronchoscope to use, the increased use of the fiber optic bronchoscope that helps to decrease the incidence, the frequency of hypoxia during one lung ventilation. Here you see the possible uh, mud positionings of, the, of both left and double, uh, right double human tubes. On the left hand side, you see in, in this column the perfect optimal position for left and right double human tube. In the second version, in the second column, you can see the, the too, too deep um, positioning of the tubes. In this position, in these cases, a ventilation of the lung would be impossible. In the third column, you see the too high positioning of the double lumen tubes. In this, posi in this position, a one lung ventilation would not be uh, possible. Or if you inflate the balloon here, as you can see, again, a normal uh, uh, ventilation cannot be possible too. And in the fourth column, you can see the wrong uh, insertion of the uh, bronchial uh, lumen. In these cases, we have to get the tube back and again uh, make the placement. Uh, a new way to see the, uh, the to verify the position of the double lumen tube is the electric impedance tomography. And we can see uh, the ventilation of the only ventilated lung in the screen of the ventilated um, lung. The major advantage of the double lumen tube is nothing to do, honestly, to say with the science. The major advantage of the double lumen tube is that the double lumen tubes are all over the world cheaper than the bronchial blockers. But there are also some scientific indications for double lumen tubes. First of all, if you want to isolate the lung, that means if there is a danger, if there is a risk of um, incubation of blood or infectious secretions from the other lung, and we want, if we want to prevent, protect the lung, the, the ventilated lung from this blood or pure from the other lung, then we have to use double lumen tubes instead of the bronchial blockers. As I said, money is an important issue. Many anesthetists are much more familiar with the double lumen tubes, and surgeons also somehow prefer the double lumen tubes for the collapse of the lung. Whether or not these are also some uh, rational indications has to be discussed. Of course, it has been shown that the deflation of the non-ventilated lung is easier and faster with the double lumen tubes because the, the lumen for the deflation is, of course, larger. Again, if you is, want to suck the secretion or blood from the non-ventilated lung, again, uh, using the double lumen tube is an easier method. Uh, application of fiber optic bronchoscopy to the isolated or separated lung or application of continuous positive pressure uh, to non-dependent lung is easier with the uh, double lumen tubes. Of course, you can uh, apply these uh, methods also during the bronchial blocker, but it is somehow more difficult uh, with the bronchial blockers. Here you can see a historical photo from our clinic where we have applied some CPAP to the non-dependent lung during an open thoracotomy. Uh, what are the other advantages of the double lumen tube? Uh, if we have a case where we have to alternate the site of ventilation and non-ventilation, 
we can alternate the one lung ventilation, of course, much easier with the double lumen tubes. Otherwise, you have to change the bronchial blocker, the side of the bronchial blocker every time. Uh, again, repositioning of the tubes or blockers are, of course, always and everywhere very possible, but repositioning of the double lumen tubes is somehow more difficult with the reposition of the repositioning of the blockers. And again, it is said there are also some studies showing that the double lumen tubes are associated with less trauma, but this is a big question mark because there are no um, real